Hi, I'm David Berlin, Editor-in-Chief of Programmable Web, and you're tuned in to another episode of Programmable Web's video series. And today, my guest is Bruce Perrins. He is uh, one of the creators of the open source movement in software and also the author of the open source definition. Bruce, thanks for your being with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so, hey, listen, I, I really appreciate that you came uh, online here uh, in such short notice because we want to talk a little bit about what's going on with Facebook licensing its various technologies. And today, Facebook announced that it would be relicensing uh, the GraphQL specification. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a specification that is sort of up and coming an alternative to the RESTful API architectural style that many people use using HTTP, the web's uh, protocol. GraphQL is a little bit different. Uh, it's neither RESTful, it's uh, what I always say is neither fish nor fowl. Now uh, today, uh, Lee Byron, who's the inventor of the open source, uh, I'm sorry, of GraphQL at Facebook, announced that the, uh, that the specification would be licensed under, and I'm reading from his blog post on Medium, the Open Web Foundation Agreement, version 1.0, that's O-W-F-A. Now, prior, just a little bit of history here, um, prior to this announcement, uh, Facebook got itself into a fair amount of hot water over the licensing of React, uh, one of its uh, web development technologies. And uh, they were originally licensing it under something called the BSD plus patents license. There was a big revolt in the open source community. The Apache Software Foundation said that from now on, none of the React technologies could be used inside of its open source software. Uh, eventually, Facebook capitulated and they've relicensed React under the MIT open source license. Then there was the question of what will happen with GraphQL because until this point, GraphQL had no real licensing associated with it. Patents had been applied for, and it was not clear which direction Facebook was going to go if it had patents, if those patents, uh, patent applications were approved and it had patents on GraphQL. So today, uh, sort of in a continuation of this opening up of its technologies, they announced that uh, it would be relicensed under the Open Web Foundation Agreement. Now, the reason I asked Bruce to join us here is because as one of the authors of the open source definition and uh, an, a legal expert on open technologies, he had a chance to look at the OWFA. And I'm interested, Bruce, to hear whether you think that they've uh, opened it up enough or is this still a little bit of a danger zone for people who are thinking of adopting GraphQL? Well, let's think first about where is Facebook coming from when you're a company that big you have a big file cabinet of continuing lawsuits. And if you, I'm sorry, if you could get closer to the mic, that would be great. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I'm having so, a hard time hearing you again. All right, we'll give this a yeah. second. To quiet. There you go. Okay, yeah. so let's talk first about where Facebook is coming from because Facebook has a big cabinet full of lawsuits that are continuing, and a lot of them are about patents. They are that big a company. So when they go to license open source, they look at, well, here I'm going to let companies license my patents to use them in this open source software. So shouldn't I be defending myself at the same time? Shouldn't I be saying to these companies, okay, you can have the rights to my patents, but now you can't sue me over yours. So what they tried to do first was they came out with an open source like license, it hadn't been approved by the open source initiative that had some extra patent clauses. And as you said, the Apache Foundation got up in arms about that. And I wrote about it too. It was, I thought, a little too strong a patent clause. So mm -hmm. uh, then they went to the MIT license. Now, if you look at the MIT license, MIT license doesn't say anything about patents at all. And that's confusing because it actually has an implicit patent grant. And that's by something in law called equitable estoppel. 
if you give someone permission to use the software, you can't come back to them and then say, no, you can't use this software because uh, you're infringing my patent and now I'm going to sue you for lots of money. Um, so you've already exhausted the rights that you can sue for under the MIT license. So, right, okay. And, then, and again, this is, for Re this is for React, not GraphQL. That's React. Now, then we go to their standard. And, and besides React, this was applying to a number of open source programs that they were putting out, I think four or five. Mm -hmm. And um, they relicense those all under MIT, as far as I'm aware. They have some other programs that are possibly still under that license. Under the old uh, BSD plus patents license. Yeah, and yeah. then um, they are coming out with this uh, GraphQL standard. And in that standard, they also have patent clauses in the same license. And people again go up in arms and they switch to another one, which is this Open Web Foundation license. That right, I, and I've never heard of that before. It's not, it, it's not one of the open source licenses, is it? No, because it's not a software license. It's a license for a standard and the patents in it. Specifically, this, this text is all. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we give you copyright in the very first paragraph and then the entire rest of it is patents. Okay. And so the problem I have with the Open Web Foundation license is that it doesn't allow you to subset a standard and still have the patent grant all the way down in paragraph 8.6, subsection two, so long as all required portions of the specification are implemented, are the key words here. So what that says is you get a patent license as long as you implement the whole standard. And we remember this trick because Sun used to do this on Java too. You had to implement all of Java or you didn't get the rights. And so um, here, if they have required parts of their standard, you must implement all of the required parts. Now, who is to tell them that they can't have a required part that says, if I open this API, you go mining Bitcoins for me? So, right. so, so, so uh, the, the document doesn't establish what all the required parts are. So it leaves, essentially leaves that open to interpretation, right? Well, it leaves it open to what you specify in your standards document. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. I see. If you stick required on this and someone wants the patent grant, now they have to implement it. They I don't see. really have a choice. So what we're saying here is you really have to look at how your software developers have implemented the standard because uh, they could actually come back to you and say, you didn't get the patent grant because there's a bug here and you didn't implement the whole standard or someone just mm -hmm. elected that. Now, on the other hand, this is, is what you'd be told by the grantor. If I didn't say all required, then someone could just implement one line of the standard and use that to exercise my patent in something totally unrelated. Okay, okay, so we don't want people to do that either. We don't want these companies played a fool, but I think we need a better middle ground in which companies actually get to subset the standard, possibly modify the API, and in general, innovate. And, and when you say you have to do all the required things, to a great extent, that shuts down innovation. Okay, so uh, I, I think, you know, if I go back to the many years of reporting that I've done, thankfully, uh, thanks in many parts to you. Uh, uh, one of the tenets of the open source community is this idea of working on derivatives of things that are open and then using those derivatives to innovate further or, or you know, what they sometimes call forking, right? Like extend the standard and possibly even drop things that people have decided are not useful. 
Right. So it, I think what you're pointing out here is, is if there's something that you find not to be useful in the specification, and, it's and then you and then you and then you uh, deploy something, you implement something that leaves those uh, uh, those items that you believe to be unnecessary out of your implementation, then Facebook's lawyers could come back to you and say, sorry, uh, you didn't implement the whole thing. So therefore, you don't get a license to our, our patent. Yes. And I haven't looked at the actual standard to mm -hmm. see what's required and what's not. Right. And someone could actually come out with a whole standard with no required sections. Right. They could put in a requirement that's totally absurd. But th there's no, uh, there's no legal language. Uh, unless, well, you're more of an expert on this than I am that prevents them from saying or changing their mind about what's required. Is that not true? Well, um, if you had a document that you implemented from and they said, oh, well, we've changed the requirement and they took you to court, you would show the judge the document that you implemented from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you could probably defend yourself if they changed a requirement. But once you go to implement the newest version of the standard to keep the patent grant, you have to implement everything that's required again. Right. So what would be a, a middle ground? How do you word that in such a way that, uh, going back to what you said earlier, somebody doesn't take one little piece and then use that to build something completely different, maybe something that competes with Facebook, you know, somewhere in between that and, and where we are today, which is, well, okay, uh, if you don't implement the whole thing, uh, you don't get a, a grant to our patent license. I, ha. Well, you have to at least implement a substantial amount of the standard okay. to get the grant. I, it's perfectly fair to the, for them to say, if you just implement one line, you're being a bad actor and you don't get the grant. Mm -hmm. But if you implement a substantial portion and you change it as you think it should be changed, you really should still get the grant. And what, what and about if what about if uh, what about if somebody uh, can they can they restrict you to purpose? Like can they say this is strictly for the purpose of implementing? a standard technology like an API for decoupling two nodes from each other. I, I don't I want to get, I want to be careful about saying the front end from the back end, but you understand what I'm saying. Can they, can they say you need to implement a uh, majority of the standard for this particular purpose, as opposed to somebody taking a piece of the standard and using it for something completely different. Okay, so they haven't put a usage restriction okay. in this version, and I wouldn't recommend that. And, and I have to also say, Facebook's lawyer is also my lawyer, and um, she, she's actually uh, disagreeing with me on my recent findings about this. It's, you know, you're the open source evangelist, and what we're really talking about here is protecting one party's patents from another party. And, and there's a point there. It's, it's, I'd rather all of software patenting went away. Um, but when I'm interpreting this kind of license, I'm interpreting it on behalf of, say, one of my customers. So they have patents. They find value in them. They want to keep them, and they're worried about how they license them to people and how other people use them. So we in the open source world have to think about where's the other side coming from, you know, even if it's not the way we believe in things. Right. So where do you think this is going to end? Uh, I think that... Uh, this could actually use some adjustment, this open web foundation thing, which, you know, yeah, we've not seen it really often, even though somewhere someone's using it. Mm -hmm. uh, could
could still use some adjustment or they could go to yet a different text. And they're sort of groping their way along to an intellectual property policy that everyone else can live with and they can too. Well, uh, it certainly remains to be seen what happens with Facebook. They clearly capitulated to a bunch of pressure when it came to the way they originally had licensed React. And uh, depending on uh, how pervasive your opinion uh, goes out there into the open source community and the response there and whether Facebook registers that or not, or maybe you are going to talk to your attorney, who's also Facebook's attorney on the back channel, maybe we'll see some change. Uh, well, I can only tell her what I think. She won't discuss her other customers with me. Right. Well, I, I'm sure that can be expected. It's very confidential, I know. Well, uh, Bruce Perrins, uh, I want to thank you very much for your time, especially, again, on such short notice. It's been great to have you here on our Programmable Web's video series, and uh, we look forward to having you again. Thank you. And so that was Bruce Perrins. He is uh, one of the founders of the open source movement when it comes to open source and software. He's also the original author of the definition of open source. I'm David Berlin, Editor-in-Chief of Programmable Web, and you're tuned in to Programmable Web's video series. Please come back to Programmable Web to find more content just like this. <laughs>